dogs and cats went up the hill behind the village before the tidal wave came. I guess they could sense it. And the older people were telling us to watch the uh, water, the ocean in front of us. And if it started making a big whirlpool out there, then we should start heading up the uh, hill behind the village. Sago, Skinagoga, welcome to the storyteller. From the deserts of the southwest to the frozen tundra of the north, and all across this great land there are stories, true stories of First Nations people whose lives have been changed forever, who are following Jesus Christ without reservation. Join us now as we listen to The Storyteller. My name is Don Shugak. Uh, I was born in 1950 in a village called Old Harbor, Alaska, on Kodiak Island. Uh, I'm Sukhipiak from that area, which is uh, Aleut, uh, from the chain there. And uh, my mom and dad grew up in a village called Eagle Harbor on the island. And that village is... Uh, abandoned. If you were to fly over today, you would see uh, holes in the ground where uh, old barabras were, the old mud houses that they used to have when they were growing up. They moved from Eagle Harbor to Old Harbor where I was born in 1950, December. I grew up uh, knowing what it was like to live in the ocean, live on the ocean, and li live from the ocean. I was very young when I learned to hunt for seal and bear, go halibut fishing, get crab and clams, different types of mussels and sea urchin. Of course, we had our own names for those when I was growing up and in our uh, Sukbiak language. A lot of our culture was lost because of education and religion that came in, banning the uh, culture of the Aleut people down there. There were a lot of times, uh, even now that I miss that old type of life where you'd spend all the time in the woods and out on the ocean, uh, kind of an ocean person, that's what the way I grew up. So I fished and I hunted off the ocean there. Summertime we'd go out and get uh, seagull eggs in the springtime, you know, and harvest seagull eggs and crab. It was a neat, neat place to grow up. Missionaries came in to Old Harbor when I was very young, and I think they were there before I was born, but my mom was the first one uh, that understood the message of the gospel. And she came to know the Lord in a village where, because of the uh, interaction between the uh, larger culture and our culture, there was so much turmoil and upheaval that there were a lot of times when the village was, you could just call it dark, where uh, alcohol took over and all the abuse and all the domestic violence and neglect of children all, all took place. And we were part of that. My dad would uh, also uh, drink and he would... Uh, There'd be a lot of violence when he did that. And so we grew up under that, like uh, just about every village in Alaska did. And so there were a lot of problems came out of the villages because of that. And we're battling that today. And we're trying to find answers to those things. And in my life, I uh, found out that God is the only answer for that and uh, he gives us the answers in the Bible. And a lot of times uh, we don't pay attention to it because we don't think it's real. 
because of how the gospel came into the world and and into our world and our culture and and it came in such a way that uh, uh, just blew our culture away. And so there's a lot of bitterness toward uh, Christianity. But the truth in the God's word is is what changes people. And that's what changed my mom's life. And uh, my dad's life, eventually, he came to know the Lord, probably around 1959. And the interesting story about that is that I was a missionary that dad was building a house and uh, a frame house and he said that uh, the missionary would come and help him and dad was a Russian Orthodox lay reader in uh, our old church and he really didn't want to hear anything that uh, the missionary might say. So all the missionary would do is come over and help him and uh, work with him. And then once in a while he'd quote a scripture verse. And that scripture verse uh, hit dad's heart. And uh, he realized that the word is pretty strong. Word is, God's word is pretty powerful. And not too long after that he came to know the Lord. I probably came to know the Lord uh, when I was 12 years old under a missionary called Violet Abel. And uh, back then, I'd gone to a sewing class that she was putting on for uh, the women in the village there, and I had to ask my mom a question, so I went in there and I saw at the back of uh, the chapel that they were at, a uh, panoramic view of the Bible. And I understood the whole plan of God's uh, creation in this world. I saw the beginning of it, and I saw the end of it. And it made sense to me, and in the middle of that was the cross of Jesus Christ. And I understood the love that God had for me then. When I looked at that panoramic view of, of the Bible and God's plan for the time that we live in, uh, it was really nothing uh, new. What was missing to me, and I understood it at that time, was the personal side of God's reaching out to me. And I saw that in this uh, plan that he had in the Bible, that the cross was a focal point for reaching out to me, that he sent his son for Don Shugak. And the reason he sent his son for Don Shugak is because he wanted to bring him back. In, uh, in some cultures, and I believe... Uh, our culture was kind of that way. Was there was no understanding of of sin. Um, just it was whatever you did was part of everyday life. That it just that it just happened that way, and things were accepted that way. But there were certain things that you didn't do when you were growing up. And those things we called wrong. Those things we called bad. And there was an understanding then that that we had, that uh, we weren't good people all the time. And so when Jesus came down, and this is God who was clean and pure and didn't do anything wrong. He came down and all my badness was put on him. And he took the punishment for that badness for me, for Don Shugat. He took that punishment so that he could give me his goodness and I could stand before the Father clean. And uh, that just that just brings tears to my eyes that God would do that for me. What a profound thought that a God of all this creation Everything that we see around us, 
this huge God and, and you look at the universe and Earth is such a speck in the rest of the earth universe and yet he sent his son to die for Don Shugak and try to bring him back to himself. To me, that's a profound thing. If he could do that for me, I couldn't do any less but turn my life over to him. So I did. I went back home and, and the Holy Spirit had been talking to me. And, and I didn't understand it then. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I, I felt like I had to talk to God. So I went to my room and got on my knees and I asked God to come into my life and be a part of it. And I didn't understand then what, what I had done. But I could look back now, and I'm 53 years old, and I could look back now and see how God has led me all those years in my life. And it's been a, it's been a ride with the Lord. Back in um, March of uh, 1964, on the 27th of that month, we had a catastrophe hit the state of Alaska, and it was called the uh, biggest earthquake, I guess, that we've ever experienced up here. And it caused uh, a huge uh, devastation to the city of Anchorage and to the coastal communities because of the tidal wave that followed after. And I was part of that in the village of Old Harbor. The tidal wave came and uh, wiped out the whole village. Um, I remember when the tidal wave, the earthquake came, um, all the dogs and cats went up the hill behind the village before the tidal wave came. I guess they could sense it. And the older people were telling us to watch the uh, water, the ocean in front of us, and if it started making a big whirlpool out there, then we should start heading up the uh, hill behind the village. Well, we were a little too slow, and everybody started yelling that something was happening, and there was a village ahead of us called Kaguya, who had been hit first by the tidal wave. The first wave came through there, and then it was receding going back out. And three guys went down to a radio shack, which is how the villages communicated then. It was a radio shack, and it still was standing, so they called Old Harbor and told them that there was a tidal wave coming. When you meet your Creator, will you be at peace with Him? He wants you to be, so much so that He sent Jesus to be our peacemaker to die for our wrongdoing and to bring us back to God. Listen to his words. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're looking for peace with God, you must turn to him and put your trust in Jesus, the one who saves us from our sin. Then you will know true peace and will be ready to meet your maker. If you have any questions or comments about what you've heard, we'd enjoy hearing from you. You can phone us toll-free at 877-766-4648. That's 877-766-4648. You can also visit us on the internet at withoutreservation.com. Thanks for listening. There's more to this story, so we hope you'll join us again next time as we listen to The Storyteller. <laughs>